and welcome. Um, this is, in case, just to make sure that you're in the right place, we're, this is the Public Art for Neighborhoods uh, Community Connections Grant Workshop. This is the first workshop that we're having, and we'll be having additional workshops that with pretty much the same content uh, every two weeks uh, from now uh, until March. Um, this is for a new grant program that can help communities work together with artists on projects that benefit them both. Um, and my name is Julia Moore. I am the Director of uh, Public Art for the Arts Council. Um, also on this call is Bailey Peha. She's from our Grant Services Division. And if you call the Arts Council to speak about the program, you're probably going to speak with one of us. Um, as we go along, please enter any questions into the chat box. And if you're following on Facebook Live, um, you can uh, enter questions into the comments section and Bailey will be helping you. Um, we'll get to as many questions as we can during the workshop. Um, we will have some breaks for uh, to answer some questions. And um, whatever we don't have time to address, we will add to our frequently asked questions document on our website. Um, we can also answer it privately later. Um, and if it's something that you need to talk about um, in more detail about your own project, that's probably best done outside of the workshop setting. Um, and if you um, ask a question and we seem to ignore it, we may have already planned to answer it later in the workshop. So be patient and your question may end up being answered. Um, and as a reminder, this workshop is being recorded. Um, it will be on our website in a few days for anyone to refer to. Um, and the video will be on our Facebook page at the Arts Council. Um, and if you uh, have to stop out of this workshop, um, we have a full schedule of workshops and you can always get another one. So um, thank you. And Bailey, can you go to the next uh, slide and um, go full screen? Awesome. Perfect. All right. So this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, but I want to just do a thumbs up um, for just the people that are on the call right now. How many people are um, representing communities um, today? Do a thumbs up or wave. Okay, and how many are artists today on this call? Thumbs up or wave? Ooh, there we go, another artist. Super, thank you. Um, so this is what we're going to be talking about. Um, this is what we're gonna be talking about today. We're going to introduce the Public Art for Neighborhoods program. Um, we're gonna talk about the Community Connection Grants. We're gonna talk about uh, the eligibility, who can apply and what projects are eligible. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how decisions are made, and then we'll talk about how to apply, and then we'll have a couple of breaks for questions uh, in between. So um, with that, Bailey, can you go to the next slide? Um, so what is Public Art for Neighborhoods? Um, Public Art for Neighborhoods is a program um, of the city of Indianapolis that returns 1% of the value of incentives that developers receive from the city back to the source of the tax dollars that funded the, in the incentive, which is the city of Indianapolis. So let's say a developer received $5 million from the city to help them complete their project. They are required to contribute 1% of it or $50,000 either in cash to the Public Art for Neighborhoods Fund um, or in the form of $50,000 worth of public art as part of their project. And developers can choose which option makes sense to them. Um, so the, the grant funds, um, well, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, but the Arts Council, we administer both sides of this program. So we help developers get approval for the public art they choose to commission as their requirement, and we administer the grant program from the pool of funds that developers have contributed. Um, and the ordinance that uh, provided for this program is very specific about the types of grants that can be made and how they're decided and we follow that ordinance very closely. And um, if you want to, we, I can uh, contact you and talk to you about where to find the ordinance and I can even email you a copy of that ordinance. It's very short. Um, okay, so Bailey, can you move to slide four, please? 
So what are the Community Connection Grants? Um, so this program um, was developed uh, because of the COVID-19 emergency and the urgent need to support racial justice efforts in Indianapolis's neighborhoods. Um, the Arts Council asked the city to release nearly the entire pool of developer contributed funds so that we can make these arts grants now very quickly as they're most needed. Uh, we have $50,000 available and we are requesting applications for any amount from $500,000 to, $500 to $2,500. Um, the thing to remember about these is that they're themed grants. Only projects related to addressing COVID-19 on a neighborhood scale or helping neighborhoods in their fight for racial justice will be considered for this funding. Um, and this is a rapid response grant a program. So we are continually going to review applications and make decisions and grant funds quickly so that the needs can be addressed while they're still relevant. Um, application deadlines are every two weeks. We'll talk about that a little later. And if the grant application is, improve, is approved, um, cash to pursue the project can be in your hands as quickly as a month after you apply. Um, our goal is to make these funds available and useful to help in these two very pressing community needs and to employ artists to help um, address these needs on a neighborhood level. Um, Bailey, can you switch the slide? So who's eligible to apply? Um, the point of this grant program is to enlist artists as active contributors to communities. And these are partnership grants where artists and communities have to work together. Um, all of the projects require both a lead applicant and an arts partner. Um, the lead applicant is the person who um, will submit the application under their name. They'll get the grant check and they'll be responsible for delivering the project. And the lead applicant can be either an artist or an organization. Um, if it's an organization, the applicant has to be located in Marion County, and it has to have a mission to serve the neighborhood where the project would take place. And they do not have to have a 501c3 nonprofit certification. Um, if you're an artist, an artist must partner with an organization, and organizations must partner with an artist. Um, artist applicants, if you are the, an artist and you want to be the lead applicant, um, you don't have to be, you don't have to live in the neighborhood um, where the project will take place. But one of the things the reviewers lo are looking for is um, the authenticity of the connection um, between the project and the neighborhood. And one of the things they do look for, um, they won't penalize you if you don't, but that connection between the artist and the community where the project will happen. Um, and it's really up to the, up the application to demonstrate that authenticity. And we'll talk about the actual application form and application questions um, in a little bit. Okay, next slide, Bailey. So who cannot apply? So not everybody is eligible to apply for this. Um, arts organizations cannot apply for this grant. And the reason is because we're looking to empower non-arts organizations and artists to work together for community benefit. We have lots of other grants for arts organizations. They do include project grants. Um, you can check our website or you can email Bailey and we'll give you our contact information at the end of the workshop. Um, but Bailey can tell you about all the grants we have and what you might be eligible for if you're an arts organization. And if you're not sure uh, whether your organization is considered an arts organization, give us a call. Uh, we'll help figure that out. Um, but even if you can't apply for the grant as a lead applicant, arts organizations can be part of the project in a community capacity. Um, so it's not like we're totally cutting arts organizations out. It's just that they cannot apply for the grant. Um, Another person, another group that can't apply are uh, schools. And if you're a school or a unit of city government, because these are city funds, it would be double dipping and the city can't receive them. But schools, public parks, et cetera, can be locations for arts activities as long as the activities are open to everybody. Um, and then finally, for-profit businesses cannot apply for these funds, uh, but they can benefit in other ways. We encourage awardees to purchase from their local businesses or to use them as venues for the arts project. Just like the others, they just cannot apply for these grants. Okay, next slide, Bailey. 
So what projects are eligible for a grant? Um, and the first thing to talk about is that the only grants that are eligible, they absolutely have to relate to COVID-19 or racial justice. These are the most important issues facing communities right now. And these are where artists are already working with neighborhoods. Um, all the projects um, to be eligible for this grant have to be arts-based and they have to pay artists for the work that they do. And we'll talk a little bit about paying artists in a minute. Um, the artists, they can be any kind of artwork. They can be visual arts, music, literature, design, social practice, even food or even fashion. We are defining art and artists very, very broadly for this grant because art looks different for different communities. Um, the idea is that the project does respond to the needs and desire of the community. So we're looking for situations that are happening on that neighborhood basis and responses that are happening in that neighborhood so that we're getting as small as possible to, have to, to deploy an arts response uh, to a situation that uh, communities are facing. Um, and the grant application should demonstrate both what's happening and why the arts-based response is appropriate. Um, so next slide, Bailey. So these are just illustrations, just a couple of examples from pro of projects from other places that could be eligible for a grant like this because they demonstrate a neighborhood-based response to COVID-19 or the fight for racial justice. We're not telling you that this is what we're looking for. We're not telling you to copy these examples. Um, they're just, these communities came up with these solutions for their own community and your community solution is going to be right for you. So the illustration that you see on the left um, is a donated refrigerator that was placed in public in a community um, and given a little shelter and it was decorated by an artist to show support and love for the community. And this is free food, uh, free refrigerated food, fresh food that's free for the taking for anyone who's hungry. And then the house that it's next to um, has just run a cord and donates electricity. And I know it's probably breaking all kinds of codes, but you know what? It's a response that needs to happen. Um, and the one on the right uh, is a documentary uh, photograph of um, a neighborhood in Washington, DC that hosts a daily sing-along for racial justice. So they get together, um, an artist leads the songs. Um, they sing for probably about 15 minutes. And then the sing-along is followed by a discussion of whatever people want to discuss at that moment. So again, this is a way of an artist working in a neighborhood, in neighborhoods to address situations that they see that the neighborhood wants to address. Okay, next slide, Bailey. So what projects can't be funded? Um, so because this is a project grant, um, things that are um, considered general operating support cannot be funded. So we can't pay your rent and we can't pay your electricity bill, but we definitely encourage you to pay yourself from grant funds for the time and expenses related to make the, making the project happen. And we'll talk a little more about that later in the workshop. Um, this grant cannot fund religious services or religious activities, but activities can take place at a church. We definitely encourage churches and other places of worship to host community arts activities. Um, and you cannot use funds from this program to raise other funds. Um, so, for example, you can't use funds from this grant to hire a band to play at your fundraising event, even if you're raising funds for COVID relief efforts. That is considered a fundraising expense. So, you can't use the grant to pay for that. Okay, next slide, Bailey. All right. So, as you're getting ready and you're thinking, huh, this is all sounding pretty good. Uh, I think I want to do this. Um, let's, you know, go through some questions to ask yourself just to kind of get your head together and to figure out exactly, you know, what you want to do and how this grant could be helpful. Um, so the first question is, what's the situation in our community? What's really going on? What are the needs? And I may know the needs, but how can I demonstrate those needs? Is there data? Is there a story? How can I make people understand that this is a real need? Um, the second question is, how can the arts make a difference for these needs? It's really important to understand what the arts can and cannot do and to have this discussion among the partners before you apply. Um, art, I, you know, art is my life, but even so, I realize that you know, art, art can't work miracles. Uh, you have to be realistic about it and the application should show exactly what you're trying to do 
and how the arts can make a difference. Think about what are artists already doing? Who are the artists in your community? And are they doing something already in this area? And have they, be doing it, have they been doing it for free? And is this grant a chance to get them paid to continue doing it? Um, do you like the work that's being done? Do you wanna partner with them to do more? Or do you wanna partner with them to help them do the next logical step that requires a little bit of extra cash that we can provide from this grant? You know, for artists, you may have a great idea, um, but it may not be, and I, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> um, you may have a great idea, but is this the right community and situation for that idea? We don't recommend that if you have a good idea that you shop it around to communities who are not already familiar with you and your work. Um, the relationship between the artist and the community should be organic and authentic and should not be forced. Um, if you don't have a community relationship already, uh, but you have a really great idea and you're thinking about approaching a community, think really hard about why someone who doesn't know you should trust you to have their best interests in mind. It's always best to start with the communities that you know and already have a relationship with. Okay, um, for this question is mostly for communities, is are we ready to partner with an artist? Um, partnering with an artist means understanding that artists are really creative people and their approach may not be your approach. Um, and we are encouraging the partnerships to be truly equal. The community is not just hiring artists to perform or to draw, but to help solve a problem. And, I'm, and communities should be really open to what that means and should be really willing to take a leap with an artist to see things the way an artist sees them. Um, so that's really an important thing to consider um, as you're going into this. Um, and for artists, um, communities know their people and their situations really well, and they may have an idea of how you fit in. Um, and it really is up to you to take that knowledge as a starting point and to think about what you can do to take it to someplace they never thought it could go. And that is your strength as an artist, is you think of things in a way that I would say ordinary people really don't. And that, and really, and we're trying to show this is the, the joy and the goal and the advantage of partnering with an artist to meet community needs. Um, the next question is, um, is the idea feasible and is it achievable? You know, when you go into this process, you should have a strong idea about what you wanna do and to make sure that you can do it and that you can do it within the funds and the timeline that you have available. Um, as a reminder, all of the projects under this grant have to be completed by the 31st of May next year. Um, but your timeline may need to be set based on situations as they appear in the community. So you might need to take something a little bit more immediate action and to make sure that what you want to do can actually happen within this very short time frame. Um, my advice about this is to focus on what you can do and to make sure you have the resources to do it. Um, you can have a really amazing idea that's fabulous and ambitious, but you haven't built the coalition to make it happen. You know, it's only the brainchild of a couple of people and it needs a lot more people to buy into it and you may not have the time to get people to buy into it, um, to execute it in the way that you see. Um, a, a, very, a more modest idea that everyone can get behind may actually be much stronger than a big ambitious grand plan. So the next uh, thing is, do we do you need additional funds? Um, and this is where I encourage you to be very realistic about how much things cost. Um, the most you can get from this grant or the most you can ask for is $2,500. Um, your idea may cost more, um, but you should think about that and to line up funds and help from others. And in the grant application, you'll have the chance to talk about other funds that you're getting. It's not required, um, but if we can see that your idea costs $10,000 and our grant is maxes out at 2,500, we're gonna to wanna to see where the rest of that money's coming from. Um, can you engage the entire community? Um, one of the things that the reviewers are looking for is how much this represents the desire of the full neighborhood or the community. If it's just a couple of people who want it, it's not really gonna work out well for you. Um, be sure to talk in your application um, about how the idea um, got started and how everybody is fully participating, um, whether it's in developing the idea or building something or you know, even 
how many people can be there at one time. You know, we're going into a phase where where gatherings are going to be a lot smaller. You know, talk about that, the, some of these practicalities. Um, and then the final thing is, do we have the time to write the application? And I'm not going to lie to you, cre actually writing the application does take some time. Not a lot, but you do have to budget that in. Um, partners are going to need to work together to develop an idea and a timeline. You're going to have to research prices. You're going to have to potentially line up a venue. You may have to bring in some other partners. You may have to find additional funders. And then you actually have to physically write the application. Um, but the good news is you can reach out to us for assistance. We can evaluate your idea. We can point out areas where you'd need to do some more work. Um, and we can review application drafts before you submit them. So if you're going to do this, be sure that you add that into your timeline. And you may also want to add some time for other people in your community to read the application. Um, if you're an organiz organization, see if the artist is interested in helping write the application and then maybe farm some parts out to them. Um, and make sure that you keep that May 31st project completion deadline in mind. Um, so make sure that after you receive the grant, you may have some to budget in some time to do some additional project development before you actually put some activity on the ground. Okay, next slide. So how will the grant decision be made? Um, at this point, you might be asking who's making the funding decision and how it will be made. And this is, this is a fair question. Um, so the ordinance that created the Public Art for Neighborhoods Fund um, requires a 10 person panel to review grant applications. Um, the ordinance talks about who designates members to this panel, but it is a very diverse panel with representation from the arts, from the architecture and design world, from community development, and from neighborhood leadership. And they've all had a hand in developing the grant program too, so it reflects their goals and their perspectives. Um, all panel meetings are open to the public. Um, if you apply, you'll be sent a link to um, the WebEx meeting where the application is going to be reviewed. You can listen to the discussion. You won't be able to contribute at that point. And you can see how your application is being scored. Um, I have participated in these open panel meetings before um, as a, a grant applicant. Um, it is very hard. It is very scary. And you really want to pipe right up and talk about it. Um, but you have to hold your tongue. But and it's really, really useful when I'm writing grants to see how other people are thinking about and reading what I'm writing. Um, so this, this panel is going to discuss the application and they're going to um, score it. And the score will be used to determine funding. And the higher the score is, the more likely it will be funded. Um, there are three review criteria that are on our website and in the application packet, and we'll take a look at those right now. Bailey. So the grant review criteria, um, so this is what the review panel is looking for and what they're going to be scoring on. Um, there's three dimensions. So um, the meaning of the grant to the community, the capacity of the applicant to actually execute the project, and the nature of the arts experience. Um, that's the, that should be at the, the, um, the core of the grant. And it's really up to you to make the case for each of these. Um, a successful grant application will describe the community and their challenge well. Um, they'll describe the project uh, well and how it meets the challenge using artistic strategies. Um, and it will demonstrate that all the resources that they need are there and available to pull it off. Um, my tip on this is that your most important resource is your partnership. Um, use the application to convince the reviewers that the artists and the community are working together and that the result is going to have an equal benefit for both. Um, we have a downloadable um, frequently asked questions document on our website with many, many more tips. And you can always ask us, as I mentioned, to comment on the application as you are writing it. And we'll let you know how well you're making the case and where we think the panelists may need some more information. Um, so at this point, um, let's go ahead and um, pause and ask for some questions. Um, is there anyone that wants to say anything? You can raise your hand. Uh, feel free to take yourself off mute. No questions? 
must be doing a really good job. <laughs> All right, well, feel free to put them in the chat box um, and we'll get to them. Um, if you're watching live on Facebook, Bailey will um, answer your question as you, um, as you get to it. Okay, well, let's go on. Okay, so let's talk about how to actually apply to the application. So um, the application um, is a, um, it's a very simple form. Um, it's gonna ask, you, you have to gather a few things in addition to having a great description of your idea, which is probably going to be frankly the easiest part of the grant because everyone's really excited about their ideas. Um, you'll need to gather a few other items. So since this is a city funded project, we need to report back to the city county council on the results. And we do this by referencing the districts that benefited and the amount of funding that was spent in each district. So you're gonna to need to tell us your district and your counselor name. If you only know one of them, that's fine. Just put it in, we'll find the rest. Um, there's a link on the application form that you can use to just type in your address and find the information. It's really easy. Um, you'll also need to understand how much the project's gonna cost and how much money you have available. Uh, these are your expenses and your income. Uh, the, the expenses and the income together are your project budget. And we'll talk a little bit about, about budgeting a project in a moment. Um, support letters are really important and they're required. Um, so if you're applying as an artist, the community that you partner with will have to write a support letter. And if you're applying as a community organization, the artist that you're working with is gonna have to write a support letter. And so these are your chance to demonstrate the nature of the partnership and the commitment of the partner. Um, you can add other support letters, they're optional and they depend on the nature of the project. Um, and then the frequently asked questions document online talks about support letters and what kinds of support letters are going to be more persuasive um, versus less persuasive as you're thinking about them. And then you'll finally, you'll also need something that will document the artistic aspect of the project. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So what is artistic documentation? So in order to understand the nature of the arts project and the impact it's likely to have, the panelists are gonna to need to see some documentation. They're gonna to need to see what the artist typically does and how this project fits into their skill set and they need to get an idea of the artistic nature of the project itself. And you can do this by providing information about what the artist can do and what they have done in the past and what they're planning to do for the project. So if you have samples of the artist's previous work like images, video, sound, et cetera, those are perfect. If you have an artist's resume or a bio or an artist statement, those are great additions too. Um, you can direct us to websites. You can only attach a total of 25 megabytes to the of information to the application form. So you might wanna direct us to websites, YouTube videos, SoundCloud account, or other online sources. Um, and you can do that by creating a live link in a document that you upload. And if you don't know how to do that, well, we can talk you through how to do that. Um, if you have sketches of the proposed design, if you're gonna be building something, or if it's a performance and you've got photos or clips of a similar performance, those are really great for illustrating what you plan to do. Um, here's a, another kind of a grant writing tip. Um, the narrative section of the application where you explain what your project is has a character limit. So the artistic documentation section can actually go into more detail about what you plan to do. Um, and I very much encourage you to do that because there's no, you know, the only limit in the document is that 25 megabyte of total uploads. Okay, next slide. Uh, so, next, there, oh, go back one, go back, go back. Yeah, this one. <laughs> so, um, budgeting your project. Um, every grant budget is individual, and I can't tell you there is no one amount that is the right amount to budget for your project. Um, so, there, but there's two big principles to keep in mind when you're figuring out how what your grant budget is going to be and how much to the, this project is going to cost. One of them is to pay yourself, and the other one is to pay others. Value your own time and labor, and value the goods and services of others. The great thing about this grant project is that the funds are meant to circulate within communities. And uh, the more 
that you can put into the community, everyone benefits. So think about those two big principles. Um, you can ask for any amount from us from $500 to $2,500. Um, and you do not need to raise any matching funds. It, it, if you can do the entire project with what you're asking from us, that's fine. We love that. Um, but we also understand that your idea may cost more and we're happy to have our funds be part of a larger project that other people are contributing to. Um, we might not be able to give you enough on our own, but if you get a grant from us, that may be what other people need to see in order to be convinced to contribute. Um, you can, if you've already got something similar going that you've re already received funds for, but it fits within this, uh, you know, this grant program, we're happy to give you funds to, con to continue with that project if it has to do with the arts and COVID-19 or racial justice. You know, the only thing about budgets is that it, you, you have to be realistic about how much money it will take. And if our funds are part of a pool of funds, then the budget that you put into the grant should show how much of it our grant is funding and how much you have raised or plan to raise from other people. Again, it's not required that other people contribute, but if it costs more than $2,500, we're going to need to see where the rest of it is coming from and whether you've already received that or had promises for it. Um, so when you look at the grant application, you'll see that the only required expenditure is that you pay the artist or artists that you're working with. So we, and we need to know how much you're paying artists. This is another reporting thing that's very important to us. Um, and then any other expenditures, you, can, you get to tell us <clears throat> because it's based on the specific project that you're doing. Um, we can do a, a quick review and we can comment on your budget to see if it makes sense. Um, and just remember the budget is the numbers version of the narrative that you're telling in the rest of the application. And the story that the numbers are telling and the story that the narrative is telling should be the same story and the same project. They're just different aspects of it. Okay, next slide. So this is our, these are our, our big grant milestones. Um, this is the calendar, the applications are open now. The first deadline is December 4th. Um, and then there are deadlines every two weeks until the middle of March. Um, the first public review meeting is December 16th. And uh, we also have review meetings every two weeks and we'll show you a bigger calendar in a second. Um, you'll, if you're in that first round of grants, the first notification is December 18th, so you see it happens pretty quickly. And then the first award checks are ready on January 8th. Um, there is a grant report, um, which is due 60 days, two months after the project is completed. Next slide. And so this is the full grant program calendar. So you can see there's eight rounds of review and you can literally apply any time. You don't have to apply on that deadline date. So if you are not ready by the 4th, um, if you apply after the 4th, 5th, 6th, 12th, whatever, we'll collect it and you know we'll review it on the 18th. So when, literally whenever you're ready, you can apply. Um, this calendar is available on the website and it's also available in the downloadable application packet. Um, and you can see that everything is, is in these two week cycles, um, but it's to your advantage to apply earlier in the program and here's why. As we make awards, the pool of avail available money is going to decrease. And if you wait too long to apply, all the money may already be promised to other projects. And then the second reason you should apply early is that if you don't succeed on your first try, you can revise your application and try again. And we will help you by telling you why it was not successful. And hopefully, hopefully it's something you can easily fix and resubmit it. We perfectly, we are perfectly happy to have you do that. Um, and then of course, we'll have information available to you. Um, you can look at the recording of the grant review meeting. We'll tell you your scores. And then the panelists um, have the option of writing comments for you and we'll tell you what those are. So that's pretty awesome. All right, next slide. Um, so the application is 100% online. Um, it's a very simple form and you can submit it from any device. You can even submit it from your phone if that's all you have. Um, we recommend that you use a desktop or laptop computer simply so you can see what you're doing on a larger screen. Um, most public libraries still have computers that you can use, although they've 
implemented some pretty strict social distancing requirements, um, and you probably also have to have a library card to use them. So the application has four parts plus a checklist. Um, the questions I guarantee you will not ask you anything you don't already know because it's your project. Um, and the questions are very general. And you know we are genuinely interested in you telling us what it is that you want to do. Um, but it does require a little bit of preparation. Um, so the narrative, we've talked about some of those. We talked about um, the support documentation. Um, let's talk a little bit about the narrative questions. Um, next slide. So these, there are literally three questions and these are the three questions. What do you wanna do? When will you do it? Who will do it? How will you do it? That first question is just tell us your project. What is it? What exactly is it that you wanna do? Um, and again, you know the answer to that because it's your project. Um, how will you work with neighborhood residents to plan and carry out the project? This is where you talk about how the project is important to the community and the connection between the artists and the community as the project starts and happens and finishes. Um, so this is where you get to tell that story of that authentic partnership. Um, and the third question is, how does this project connect to the impact of COVID-19 on your community? Or how does it relate to your community's interest in racial justice? These are the two themes that we're interested in um, with this grant. And this is where you tell the reviewers how this is the right project for this particular community at this time and what the ultimate impact the project is going to have. You can talk about the origin story of the project. Um, you can talk about any statistics or data that you may have uh, that help inform how the project developed. You can talk about um, the sites and the importance of the different venues for the project um, for the community, just everything that, that helps pull it all together and convince the viewers that this is the absolute best thing that can be done at this time. Um, try not to overstate the impact though. Um, we know that art can't solve everything and if you promise that it will, you know, we know that that's, <laughs> that's a little bit of an exaggeration but it can help. And if it's part of a larger community initiative, talk about that as well. Um, next slide. So this is, because it's a city grant, um, everything is subject to public information laws. So um, all applications are considered public, application, uh, public information. The public will be able to read your application and we'll take out personal information like phone numbers and emails and addresses, um, but they do get to see what you plan to do and where you plan to do it. Um, you know how the public can be, so make sure anything you say can pass the reporter test, which is if you don't want a reporter quoting it, think twice about saying it. Um, we will be giving the public the opportunity um, to comment on your application in writing. Uh, they will have a link to a public comment form um, and the comments coming from the public will be read out during the review meeting for panelists to hear and consider. So again, people, you can lobby people to comment positively on your application. I think that's pretty awesome. And yeah, some people may take the opportunity to level some unfair criticism. And that criticism, and I know this from working in public art for a very long time, um, usually takes the form of in asking or challenging whether the money could be better spent elsewhere. Um, and that's really hard to hear, um, especially since it's coming from people who aren't familiar with the program. Um, but there's two ways to kind of respond and set yourself up to respond to that in a positive way. So the first thing is making sure that your own community is in total agreement with the project so that they, are at, they have as much commitment to it as you do and as much commitment as the artist has. And then the second way um, you can protect against that is to really understand the facts of the program and the funding behind the program. Yes, it is city funding, but it does not come from public tax dollars. It comes from contributions for developers who have made the choice to donate to this grant program. Um, the funding is restricted by the ordinance to only this purpose, uh, which is neighborhood arts grants. And in no case would it have been available for the city to use for any other needs. This is what it's being used for. It is being used to fund the community, to fund the arts in the community. 
Um, as I mentioned before, the review meeting is public and will be available to view live via WebEx. Um, public comments cannot be taken during the meeting. All comments must be made on that public comment form I just talked about. Um, the meeting will be recorded and it will be posted on the grant website and anyone will be able to review that later. Um, the score, the panelist scores will also be visible during the review meeting after each application is reviewed. And then the scores will also be posted on the grant website. So this is a really, really transparent process. Um, so you'll know the score during the meeting, but you won't know by the end of the meeting whether the grant is going to be funded. Um, but you will know um, whether there's a likelihood of the, pro of the grant being funded because our goal is to fund every application that gets 80% of the total possible points in the scoring process. Our intention is to fund that, to fund all applications that meet that scoring threshold and to fund it at the full ask. Of course, this has to do with how much money is in the pool at the time that the application is being reviewed. Um, but our job is to just score the applications rank them, you know, put them in order with the highest score at the top and then the lowest score at the bottom. And all the scores that get 80%, we start giving away money just from the top. Um, funding decisions will be posted on the grant website after notifications have gone out. And we promise that you as the applicant will be the first to know about the decision. You will not learn it from other people and we will not post decisions publicly until after you let us know that you've received the application and that you're, you're willing to accept the grant funds. Okay, next slide. So this brings us to the end of our planned remarks. Um, we've gone through all of the topics that we said that we were going to go through. Um, we talked about the program, we talked about the grants, we talked about eligibility, how decisions are made and how to apply. And then we even threw in some grant writing tips just uh, to help you do this a little bit better. Um, next slide. So at this point, um, we can take more questions. Um, we can take questions now during the workshop and you can put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask your questions. We don't have a ton of people on this call. Um, or if your question is um, about a project that you are very interested in doing, but you need a little bit more time, you can contact us. So that's my um, email and my phone number. And there is Bailey's email and phone number. And we are perfectly happy to take your individual questions or we can answer your questions right now. So let's go for it. Anyone have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or to put them in the chat. Nothing. I answered literally all of your questions. Okay, well, this is awesome. If we were doing this in person, we would break for pizza right now. Um, but um, I'm glad you were able to join us. And um, if you have any questions, please contact me or Bailey. And I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to stop the live stream right now. And I am um, really happy that you guys were able to join us.